Hello everyone and welcome back to the semi-finals of the Lindor Abbey Rapid Challenge. It's uh, Ding Liren versus Daniil Dubov and uh, uh, Ding lost his match yesterday to Dubov and uh, now Ding needs a win uh, in this match to force a third match. So similar to Hikaru's situation against Magnus and uh, if you haven't seen the match uh, I'm now going to announce the result of the second match between Hikaru and Magnus so close your ears if you don't want to hear it. Uh, Hikaru won the second match. So uh, the first game that we've shown was a great victory for Hikaru, and then the third games, uh, the the three games that followed ended in a draw. So Hikaru won the second match, and tomorrow we will get the third match between the two of them. But now uh, Ding needs to do the same to force a third match against Dubov, and this is game one of their match, and it's really a brilliancy uh, one that your friends uh, wherever they are uh, will will definitely enjoy. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Ding with the white pieces opens with c4. So the English opening uh, is on the board. We have knight to f6 and the g3. Sorry about that. Uh, Ding pre prepares to finke to the light square bishop. We have c6 by Dubov preparing d5. Bishop to g2, d5 and now knight to f3 by Ding. Uh, and here Dubov goes for the c4 pawn. So D captures on c4. Uh, and now just castles by Ding. Uh, we have knight b to d7, continuing development, and knight to a3. Now, of course, now Ding wants to win back his pawn uh, and just uh, continue developing naturally, where he will have uh, very nice control of the of the central squares. So knight to b6 for the moment. Dubov defends the c4 pawn and queen c2, adding another attacker to the pawn. Dubov defends it once again. Bishop to e6. And now knight to e5, adding a third attacker to the pawn. And also there are some very sneaky tactics with knight captures on c6, followed by bishop captures. Uh, and here, uh, if you want to add, uh, like uh, maybe if you want to add another defender to the pawn with queen d4, then you can go into something like captures, captures, and captures with check, give up the knight for two pawns. And after, uh, let's say, the, the check is blocked, then you capture the rook. So it's uh, you, you grab two pawns. Uh, and the rook for two pieces, uh, which can be can be played for white. So uh, black usually does does not allow this. So instead, uh, Dubov goes for h5, which Dubov always goes for, whether he plays w white or black. Uh, and now, of course, his idea is he wants to play h4, bust open the king side, and use the rook to attack Ding's king. So Ding, of course, goes after his pawn. Knight a, a captures on c4. We have knight captures, knight captures, and now uh, h4. Continuing the attack on Ding's king, and now knight back to e5. And this has all been played before. It's nothing new. The knight will be uh, much safer there. Also, now you have insane pressure uh, on the c6 square by the knight, bishop, and the queen. Uh, but Dubov just continues his attack. h captures on g3. Uh, we have h captures on g3. And now this position has been reached before. In 2016, Levon Aron versus of Wesley So, uh, where So played uh, rook to c8 and uh, Wesley uh, lost that game to Levon. Uh, but here we have queen to c8 instead. Now queen to c8 uh, is a new move in the position. So already as of move 12, we have a completely new game uh, where uh, Dubov is kind of inviting knight captures on c6. For example, captures, captures. And then if queen captures on c6, you just um, win the game. Uh, of course, you, you cannot go for this because you also lose the rook. So after knight captures on c6, you would have to play something else like uh, go, go for the trade here with bishop h3 or something like that. However, Ding goes for rook to d1, not interested in uh, doing anything, uh, uh, you know, uh, rash for the moment. Uh, so uh, Dubo just continues with his attack, bishop to h3. Now, of course, Dubo wants to capture here and play queen to h3 and uh, finish off Ding's king. Uh, and of course, if you if you allow this, then the, there's just no defense. A uh, queen to h1 will be checkmate, as the rook also helps out with with the attack. If f3, just queen captures here, followed by checkmate. So nothing to be done there. So after bishop to h3, Ding declines the trade. He goes bishop to f3, and he says, I, "I'm just going to continue the game. I'm not interested in any of your barbaric attempts uh, on the king's side." So g6, Dubo now prepares to bring the bishop into the game, put the king to, to safety, and so on. Ding does the same. With b4, he wants to play a4, bishop to b2, bring the rook into the game, and so on. So bishop to g7 by Dubov and bishop to b2 by Ding, and now king to f8. The king will be much safer there, and also uh, add some protection to the bishop if the knight moves, and let's say this uh, diagonal opens up. 
ending continues playing on the queen side. With a4, he's preparing b5. We have knight to h7 by Dubov, now preparing knight to g5 to go for the bishop on f3. And Ding just continues playing on the queen side. He goes b5, now of course just uh, threatening to, to win some material here. Uh, and Dubov continues with the attack on the king side. So uh, it's like they're, two, they're playing two separate games. Ding is playing positionally on the queen side while Dubov is going for his uh, all-out barbaric attack on the king side. So knight to g5 puts pressure on the bishop. Uh, and here Ding goes uh, B captures on C6. And uh, remarkable, uh, uh, but uh, B captures on C6 uh, blunders the game completely. So uh, I would ask you to pause the video here and try to find the winning idea. So if you want, you can, but uh, I'm actually going to ask you to do it in two moves. So if, if you think you're ready for it, you can do it now. But I'm also going to ask you in two moves. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it now, really congratulations on spotting the entire sequence. Uh, but for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, bishop captures on e5. So just grabbing that knight, uh, bishop captures on e5, and now, only now, knight captures on f3. So there is no knight to recapture here. We have e captures on f3, and only now, feel free to pause the video and uh, finish the game for black uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the inevitable mate. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, bishop to g2. Incredible stuff. Uh, this is what the duo have planned out with this whole queen to c8 new move uh, idea. Uh, it's just remarkable. And w after Ding saw this, uh, it was in this position. On move 21, that Ding Liren resigned the game. And uh, game one of their second match goes to Daniel Dubov. Uh, here, he, here he resigned because everything just loses terribly. For example, if you capture the rook, queen h3, and there is no defense against queen h1 checkmate. Whatever you play, queen h1 on the next move is checkmate. Uh, and uh, other than that, let's say you capture the bishop, still the same, queen h3 check, you have to go to g1, and now queen to h1 is checkmate. And other than that, if you don't want to capture here or capture here, you could try and block the queen's uh, uh, route to uh, maybe h3 by g4, uh, but also doesn't work, now just bishop captures on f3. And there again is no defense against rook to h1 checkmate, the bishop covers these squares. So you once again have to capture the rook, and then it's just queen g4 check, king f1 check, king e1, and queen to g1 will be checkmate. Now, yes, I know your, your friends at the bar in the library are incredibly impressed, but they should be uh, for, for having such, such a great friend that knows uh, games like this to show them. So really remarkable stuff. Uh, Dubov really, really has some crazy stuff uh, prepared uh, at home, and this was just uh, th this was just uh, out of this world, taking down Ding in 21 <laughs> moves like that. Uh, but it was it was a really weird game. This one, uh, Dubov uh, playing on the king side, Ding playing on the queen side, like uh, you know, uh, uh, no no one knows what what the other guy wants. Uh, but yeah, uh, Dubov knew what he wants, and uh, in the end, this is how it uh, happened. Uh, so I'm not, I don't know if I will be able to show any more games since tomorrow I, I will be really busy. I will not be uh, in my apartment. I'm, I have to travel somewhere. So I don't know if I will be able to show the third game uh, between uh, Carlson and Nakamura, a uh, third match, but I will show it uh, at some point when I get back home. Uh, and uh, there is no third match, of course, for Ding because uh, the second game from the match Ding also lost and the third game was drawn. So Dubov is the first finalist uh, of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge. And tomorrow we will find out who uh, will join him, Hikaru or uh, Carlson. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Luke Garrett, Joseph Conrad, Anthony Falzone, uh, Dejan Trichkovic and Joseph Selinger for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.